So far, I've been teaching you the basic tools for carrying out basic descriptive analytics to help you reconstruct a picture of what's going on with a data set. Thus far, we've been assuming that data comes to us in a state that's ready to use. More often than not, this is not the case. When you conduct surveys, whether electronic or on paper, there will always be people who will not conform to your requirements. When you work in an organization, different people from different departments will not follow the mandated data recording formats. Each individual will have his or her own quirk when it comes to recording information. It's easy to say, well, we should enforce the standard. You can try, but there will always be people who will not comply for a variety of reasons. So we need the data to be standardized and clean up so that we can perform our data analysis. Earlier, I taught you how to use the filter function. This is very useful because we can use this to quickly root out entries that are problematic. When you click the button at the top of each header, a window will appear showing you all the unique entries present. You can easily use this to select abnormal entries and then manually make the correction. Now this is fine if you have a few to work with, but what if you have a lot to work with, right? That's very tedious, isn't it? Now, data preparation can be incredibly boring and mundane because you'll just be finding stuff and correcting them. So, in this video, I'm going to teach you all the tools and Excel formulae that you need to do data preparation without making you do boring, boring, mundane data preparation, right? We're going to learn data prep by not preparing data. This way, you will learn how you can apply the same tools to make your life a whole lot easier for a variety of tasks, whether it is for data preparation or beyond. Sounds good. Let's begin. Let's pretend that we're organizing an exam welfare pack giveaway to provide welfare and care to your fellow schoolmates. And you have the best welfare pack in all of NUS. Contains bubble tea, coffee vouchers, movie passes for two, premium pens and foolscap paper, a cute cuddly bear, and best of all, yen yen biscuits. Those are good stuff, man. Here's what we're worried about. Because our exam welfare pack is so sought after, we will have students who will attempt to register more than once. In fact, our exam welfare pack is so good, people all over the island of Singapore, people outside NUS also want it and they will attempt to register in the hopes of getting the prize welfare pack for themselves. We could say we can solve this problem by requiring students to fill in their matriculation number. But since we're doing this online through a service like Google Forms, we can't stop people from using the same matriculation number or putting in fake matriculation numbers. Right? So we have a bunch of these guys messing up our spreadsheet. Here's what we need to do. We need to eliminate the duplicates and eliminate fake students. So let's open up our next lecture activity spreadsheet. Okay, so scroll around, scroll around, yeah? What do you see? You get all the names or the student numbers. Can you identify duplicates and fakes? Not so easy, right? Everything in this list looks very legit. For a start, let's just uh, learn how to flag duplicates, okay? We don't want to delete them right away because we might want to just keep them as a record in the future for reference, right? So how do we flag it? We can use this thing called conditional formatting to highlight problematic records. Now, to do that, let's highlight and select the column with matriculation numbers. And now, let's click conditional formatting under the ribbon menu and then highlight cell rules, select duplicate values and click OK. Oh, what happens? Ah, now all the duplicate values on your spreadsheet will be highlighted red. For now, let's just leave these duplicates alone. We'll come back to this in a while. Now, let me show you something really, really cool, right? Let's imagine that the university recognized that having a lot of outsiders trying to get a free exam welfare pack is a huge problem. So the university is willing to provide you with a name list. So for privacy purposes, you only have the matriculation number of the student and the full name of all official students. How do we compare the list? There's this really wonderful and nifty tool in Excel known as VLOOKUP. Wow, such a mysterious and exciting name, isn't it? V stands for vertical. That's all. Uh, so it's just vertical lookup. So let's open up the next lecture activity spreadsheet to better understand how VLOOKUP works. When you open up this spreadsheet, you'll see that we have columns A and B and columns F and G. Let's imagine that this is a data set showing us the members of a library and the books that they have borrowed. Column A is the member ID. Column B is the name of the library members. Uh. We have I like to read, I am a bookworm, central library. Anyway, I'll leave you to read the rest of the names. <laughs> okay, anyway, now column F and G contains the list of the books that the members have borrowed. Let's pretend that we want to merge the two lists together, all right? So we can create a books borrowed in column C. How do we do this manually? Uh, we see that member ID 8 borrowed the book How to Read Faster. What do we do? We find who is member 8. Ah, uh, this is member ID 8. iPad better. Uh, so, okay, sorry. Copy and we paste. Okay, now who's next on our list? We have member ID number 3, which is Central Library. Okay, the book is the textbook on reading. Okay, so we copy and we paste. And then we can basically keep repeating this. 
until we are done. Now as you can see, doing this manually is very very painful because you have to keep looking up and down the data set. Okay, so let me explain how VLOOKUP works. First and foremost, we need to type equals VLOOKUP, alright? Then open bracket. VLOOKUP requires four inputs. The first input is called the lookup value or what I like to call the search key. What is the search key? The search key is the thing that is common between the two data sets. In this case, I am trying to search for the member ID 1 that is present in the the other data set which is in column F. So now we press a comma and now the second input is the table array which is we're telling VLOOKUP find the value in A2 in these two columns over here. So we highlight the columns F and G and what this means is we're telling Excel look for the value in A2 which is the number one and find that in columns F to G. Now one important point over here is that VLOOKUP only looks for a match okay in the leftmost column of your data array, of your table array. In, in this case, it will only try to look for the number one in column F. What's the third input? Column index number is basically saying, which column, which information do you want to pull over? Now, I only want to pull over the name of the book that has been borrowed, and that is column number two, comma, our last input, which is called range lookup. Huh? So there's a question, do you want approximate match or exact match? Now. In all cases and at all times, always use exact match. Okay, so the answer is always false. Or if you don't like to type false, you can always put a zero. Okay, close bracket. Okay, we're done. So now we press enter and we can double click the square dot and voila. Okay, so for books where the, there's a match in the member ID, like in this case, Emma Bookworm, we have the books, the information that is retrieved. If you notice, people like, I like to read, nah, member ID number one does not exist in this data set over here. So people who don't exist in the data set, in our table array, Excel will just put a NA over here. So that is how VLOOKUP works. VLOOKUP is very powerful. Most people use it to merge information from multiple spreadsheets into a single spreadsheet. But you can also use it to check and verify information. In this case, we'll be using VLOOKUP to determine whether some of the welfare pet registrants give fake matriculation numbers. To use VLOOKUP, we'll need to create a new column. So let's do that, we'll name it CHECK. In the second row, we'll type the formula. Now, we need to provide VLOOKUP with four inputs. Our first input is we need to select our list of unique identifiers on our current spreadsheet. In this case, if matriculation numbers that our welfare pack registrants have provided. Once you have done that, press the comma button on your keyboard. Next input that we need to provide is the entire array of data from the other spreadsheet with our official list of students. And again, once you've done that, press the comma button on your keyboard. Next, we need to tell Excel which column from the official list that we want to pull into our current spreadsheet. If you type the number one, Excel will pull column one, which is the matriculation number column. If you type two, Excel will pull the column containing the names into our current spreadsheet. So for demonstration purposes, let's just type one. We'll type comma on our keyboard. Last input, we need to type a zero. The zero is to tell VLOOKUP that we want an exact match on the matriculation number. So we're done, close bracket and press enter. Now, as you can see, the cell now shows you the matriculation number. Ah, what's going on? It has put the matriculation number from the spreadsheet containing the list of students. So now, let's fill up the rest of our column with uh, the same VLOOKUP formula. A, something interesting has come up. If you scroll through the spreadsheet, you'll notice that some entries do not show a matriculation number at all. Instead, the cell says NA. This is an error message to indicate that that particular unique identifier, the matriculation number in our case, cannot be found in the official list of students. That is to say, we have found a fake matriculation number. Ah, here's a question. What if someone faked a matriculation number but was lucky enough to put in a number belonging to an official student? So, how do we read those out? Well, this is where we can use VLOOKUP to retrieve the names of students from the other spreadsheet. So let's go back to the same cell where we did our original VLOOKUP. Now let's change the third input, right, where you indicate which column to pull data from. Let's use column 2, which will pull out the names of students from the official list. Ah, okay, so we have modified our first cell. So again, let's double click the small square to fill up the rest of the cell. Ah, so those people that gave fake matriculation numbers, those are still NA, right? But now we can see a list of names and now we can compare with the names given by the registrants. So how do we find out if a person used a valid matriculation number but gave a different name or a name that doesn't appear in the official list of students? If the name from the official student list does not match the name given in the welfare pack registration, we know for sure that the registrant put in fake information. By now, I hope you realise that when we use Microsoft Excel, the aim is not to work hard but to work smart. We shouldn't be wasting our time checking every single row to find fakes using our own eyes. Is there a formula for it? I'm glad you asked. The answer is yes. We can use another formula now called IF. 
This formula allows us to input a checking condition. If the condition is met, it will produce a certain output. Otherwise, it will just produce a different kind of output. So let's create a new column. Let's name it name check. Now let's do what I do on screen. After I've typed the if formula, we need to give it three inputs. The first input is the condition. So we want to say if the name matches equals to the other name, right? Now we need to give it the second and third input, which is what to do if the condition is true, if the name matches, and what to do if the uh, condition is false, if the name doesn't match. So if it match, we will say name checks out. If it doesn't, we'll say fake name, right? As you can see, our first cell returns the value name checks out. That means the names match. Okay, very good. So now let's fill up the rest of the column and da da, there we have it. We have three values that appear in the column. We either get name checks out, those are legit registrants. The other value that we see is fake. These people have used legitimate matriculation numbers, but the name is fake. And then we have those with NA, which tells us that the, mat the matriculation number the registrants gave does not exist in the official list. We can now use the Excel filter to hide all the fakes. So all we have left are real students who want welfare packs. Yay! Let's highlight and copy everything. So, just select what you need, copy, and let's paste them into a brand new spreadsheet. Yay, wonderful! We have successfully removed duplicates and fakes. And now we've reduced our list to 450 names here. And just like that, we've read out all the fakes and duplicates and found a way to narrow our list of welfare pack recipients. Yay, so let's now start handing out exam welfare packs. Here's one for you. And here's one for you. And... Oh! Oh, what's this? I've got a welfare pack too! Wow! Wow! Got Yen Yen biscuits eh! Wow! So nice ah! Uh. No wonder everybody wants an exam welfare pack. Well, there are many more Excel tools and formulae that I could teach, but these are the basics that you will use on a very regular basis where you need to tidy up and prepare a spreadsheet. In the next lecture video, I'll teach you how to use some other tools that are on Microsoft Excel. Yeah? So, in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy some welfare myself. You should take a break too. I'll see you later.